interested in going far away. So even when it came time to go to university, rather than going to Western or Waterloo, which were closer, I went to Queen's. Dr. McClure, Robert McClure, became moderator at the time I was in university. He came to a church in Kingston that I was attending at the time. Several of us who were students at Queen's went out for lunch with him after the worship service. And I told him about my desire to go overseas. And he said, if you want to go overseas, you should go with the church. Why? Because the church works through partnerships. So I went to northern Japan, Hokkaido, and I taught in a church-related four-year college for five years, teaching English. I met someone who changed my life and I decided to stay. And we've been together for more than 40 years. My name is Keiko. I grew up a small fishing village in Hokkaido. I joined a Christian group in a high school student, maybe five or six people there. And after that, I worked uh, with a kindergarten, uh, church-related kindergarten. Most of the things, uh, we worked as a team. In 1975, we moved up to a small city called Nayoro in northern Japan, and there is a rural church center there that was established by the United Church of Christ in Japan with the cooperation of the United Church of Canada back in 1960. And we have worked there ever since. And as a rural center, it's supporting small churches, of course, but it's also working with farmers and people who are interested in issues surrounding food and agriculture. So we have twice a year programs that we call Three Love Seminars. And the three loves are love for God, love for humanity, love for the soil. I think there's a lot that we can learn from the church in Japan because it's been a minority from the very beginning. We're beginning to become a minority here. I don't think we really understand what it means to be a minority yet. The church in Japan does, and they've known that from the beginning, and they've lived with that for more than 100 years. So there's a lot, I think, that we can learn from them. There's also a lot that they can learn from us because of our experience. Of course, without MS, we never could have stayed in Japan for 45 years, so that's been the main source of support to maintain our presence there. But MS has also been very helpful when we have received, for example, uh, First Nations people from Canada to speak to the churches in Japan, or alternatively, when uh, Ainu people from Japan, the Aboriginal people of northern Japan, or even from Taiwan, when they have come to Canada, MS has supported them and helped to pay a part of their travel and also their expenses while they're here. So that has been very important. But I should mention that uh, all of the churches where we live in Japan, plus the center where we work, have also contributed to paying a portion of our salary for the last 20 years. So it's, it's a shared commitment, I think. We are hoping to return to Japan. We will be on pension. Whether that will mean retirement or not, I guess we'll find out when we get there. But if we do have extra time, I would like to do more translation, maybe uh, a little bit of writing on my own, if possible, and also hopefully spend a little more time in the garden. I don't know how much I have a, a free time, <laughs> because I go back to the same place, and then I still have uh, many things to do. But I like to do uh, gardening. There are many opportunities now to work overseas. The most important thing is that when you go to that country, you don't just float on the surface, but you build relationships so that you have a sense of why you're there and what that means. And you know, little by little, come to know what that will mean when you come back to Canada. Mm -hmm.